Dear students, welcome to NIO Studio. This is Shubhornu Chakravarti, and today's topic is Person Perception and Interpersonal Attraction. Before we start, we should know what objectives are we going to fulfill. The first is to understand the importance of social environment for self-growth and development. Here, we will see that how the society impacts our self-concept. Our next objective is identifying the factors that determine, that determine interpersonal attraction. And the third one is to understand the role of interaction with significant others. Significant others means parents, siblings, friends. And that will be for the formation of self-concept or perception. So, let's begin. See, before we proceed, we need to know what is self-concept. Well, just imagine um, you go for an interview and there the interviewer asks you that tell me something about yourself. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Uh, what physical trait do you think is the best within you? What are your goals, motives? What do you want to become in life? Just imagine you have been asked so many questions. So what will be your answers? Let me tell you, these answers will reflect your self-concept. Basically, self-concept is a set of our own beliefs and perceptions about us. And believe me, it plays a role in forming our behavior with the people all around us. And this phenomena evolves slowly and enhances within us with growing age. Even at this age, it must be growing. And this is the most important, our experiences also plays a pivotal role. In short, we will see what are all these things. Till then, let's see another thing. See, self is further divided into two aspects, the subject and the object. Now, when I talk about subject, the subject is the I within you, which thinks, which regulates the emotions or sometimes burst out. Something which feels all the things around you. That is the I, something which thinks. And when we talk about the self as an object, we are basically talking about the me. Try to understand the point. You have to understand this. It's me. The me is actually shaped by the entire society and the culture we are living in. For an example, you also must be have a nickname of yours. And not only that, suppose someone starts complimenting you. What will you feel? What will you think? You will think, yes, that person is talking about me. This is me. This is how a child starts thinking about himself that this is how the entire society is talking to me. And this is how our me, the objective self, slowly starts constructing within us. Our next topic will be the perception of others. There, we will link how this objective self of yours, that is the me, is get, gets created because of the perception of others. So, let's go for our, so, our first concept which we are going to understand today is the perception of others. How it plays an important role in the development of our self-concept. Just imagine how this happens. When we are small, you can say, when a neonate means a newborn baby can actually never differentiate between his or her self and that of others. But gradually, the child gets absorbed in his or her social environment and the child attains the self-awareness. As I told you earlier, the things like the nicknames or the compliments, this actually works. This will actually construct the objective entity, the objective self within you. And that uniqueness, you know, that uniqueness means where you will actually feel that this is me. 
I am different from others. This is my world and that is their world. This happens gradually. Now let's see how this entire process takes place. When we are small, let's say um, the first two years of our life, we actually go through our infancy. Now, after exactly that period, slowly the cognitive and linguistic ability in us starts developing. When the child starts interacting with everyone around him or her, his ability to think, interpret and present the information about the environment starts growing. And with more and more interaction with people around, the self originates. The child observes everyone with the advancement in age. Gradually, self-organize and adjust to the behaviors of the people around. Now, as I told you, the cognitive and the linguistic ability starts enhancing. And this is what helps the child in self-organizing the information which he or she is getting from the environment. And you have to understand that this works as if there is an input-output mechanism. The child inputs all the information from his environment and then the self starts evaluating. Just try to understand the point. The I, the subjective self, it somehow helps in creating the objective self. And this shows that the cognitive ability of the child is slowly enhancing. And the child, at the end, learns that it is his world. It is him. Or you can say, if I say it from my perspective, this is me. This is my world. And this is how the perception of others, especially the parents, siblings, the friends around, they talk about you a lot when you are small. And this actually helps in creating the necessary self-concept within you. Now, let's go for the next thing. That is, how do you form impressions? Oh, this is a very important topic. Why so? Just imagine, have you ever thought this? That just in the first look, you judge a person. Means, you think how that person is looking at me or how he's talking to others. And all these informations, again, the informations is enough for you to think about or judge about that person. So basically, that person is forming an impression of his. That projection on you is what is creating the impression. But let me tell you, this is not a very simple process. We just don't add up various information and come up with a conclusion. Instead, while forming a certain impression, there is a continuous comparison and correlation of traits going on within us. See, by the time you are three or four, you have met so many people around. And obviously, when uh, you reach a certain age, like when you are in your teenage or something, you have met so many people around you. So somehow this brain is an amazing statistical machine. It has, it has all the information about the people, their traits, their tendencies. And we continuously, it continuously correlate and, compa and compare and comes up with the conclusion that, okay, this is that person. Here I'm talking about that this mechanism of impression formation provides us a dynamic whole. That is, a projection of someone's trait which gives an overall picture. Enough for us to come up with a conclusion and judge someone. So take two minutes and think. When was the last time someone formed an impression on you? How did you come up with the conclusion? We will see that we rely a lot on what others say and especially the negative ones. The negative and unusual information as well as the first impressions as you have heard that the first impression is the last impression. So that along with the negative and unusual information which you get from that person. Just imagine, uh, has it happened in your life that you have gone to someone and you have met for, some, for the first time and then from your common link you must have asked that what kind of person is he? And especially, is there a negative or unusual thing about him? 
See, these are the information you collect. And then the self process it like anything. And once this processing is done, it gives you a certain conclusion that this is that person. These are the kind of, you can say, uh, you come up with a conclusion, you come up with a judgment that these are the traits within the person. I believe these are the traits within a person. This is how we think actually. So, while forming impressions, we mix the previously formed abstractions, means something which you ask from other, and they will tell that, yeah, this person is something like this, and also our own observations, and as I told you, others' judgment too. So when we mix all of them, we get a picture, an overall picture, which we call as the dynamic whole. Not just simple addition, it's something which is beyond it. Something more is there, and it is enough to give you an overall picture of that student or that person. Now, our next topic is going to be a very interesting topic. This is how you deal with the social world, means the internal personal attraction. See, you must have noticed that we love spending time with people we like and avoid whom we don't like. See, this is a general thing which we have seen in our daily lives. We interact with so many people around us, in the school, in the family, in the marketplace, with so many strangers, we do interact with them daily. And somehow, again, the self starts making judgment. The impressions get formed. So just try to think about this. This is a connected thing. Our perception of others, our self-concept, impression formation, all these things are connected. Please do think about it later. For now, let us come back to the point. The internal processes taking place between persons is actually known as the interpersonal processes. And we have to keep it in mind, social psychologists have investigated a lot on these processes. So let us go through a few of them. The first and the most important, the two most important things are attraction and long-term relationships. When we talk about attraction, we should not only think about the husband-wife intimation. We should also think about others, like in case of friends, the workplace companions, there are so many things. You see a stranger and you form an impression, a good or bad impression. This is all we will study in detail. So for the time being, our interpersonal attraction is a common experience we all have gone through in our lives. And we have to understand that what are those underlying factors behind interpersonal attraction. Believe me, it's going to be very interesting. The first, the first factor which influences the interpersonal attraction, physical attractiveness. Imagine a scenario, a person with unkempt hair, shabby hair, hasn't taken bath for around four or five days, or you can say uh, wearing torn clothes, um, not brushed properly, are you going to like that person? So let us think about a bit more. Let us imagine a bit more. Suppose that person is holding a dagger in his hand. Will you like that person? I don't think so. I don't think so. So generally, we react positively towards attractive people. This is a general trend. See, exceptions can be there. But this is general. This happens most of the times. Similarly, we talk about the similarity and complementarity. Now, this is another very important concept. Why similarity? Why do you have friends? Why do you have best friends? See, we like talking to people, those who are similar to us. That is, who share similar likes and dislikes, as well as attitude like us. See, this is called similarity. Most of the times, see, here again I will say, the attraction, the meaning of attraction that you feel good, you feel relaxed talking to that person. Somehow, the interpersonal attraction helps in emotional regulation too. It balances our emotions. So, it has also been observed that people with opposite nature too like to interact with each other. What can be the reason behind this? Think. People with absolutely opposite nature. 
maybe there is some need maybe there is something they know that they lack and in their company they can actually fill the loopholes so this is called complementarity even we can't find people like this those are absolutely different but stay for a long long time together and obviously similarity is a very important concept second sorry the third the factors which influence the interpersonal attraction all over again familiarity and propinquity now what is propinquity nearness and physical proximity think about yourself think about people around you see we often see that people who interact more gets more closer and friendship develops in comparison with others and repeated interaction often leads to interpersonal attraction so as i told you think about it we do have good friends we go to school um, there are many instant there have been many instances that people say that the school friends have become the lifelong friends why is it so because the interaction was huge the interaction was more so nearness and physical proximity actually helps in enhancing the interpersonal attraction then comes the reciprocal liking see this is pretty important pretty easy you can say suppose you know that someone hates you would you like that person very rare very 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 rare see we like someone when someone likes us this is pretty easy reciprocal liking then comes another concept the effect the another factor effect refers to emotions and feelings which vary in intensity people who does something which triggers the positive or ne negative effect is liked or disliked by, by us let's take a small hypothetical example that you met someone who came and started abusing you and you know uh, with a very bad behavior would you like that person think about it absolutely not you will act and a very bad inform a bad impression will be formed on you this is called effect the effect refers to emotions and feelings which vary in intensity this is also a very important factor behind the interpersonal attraction then we come across the need for affiliation see why do we go to parties why do we do so many cultural meets and so many things why do you think that a lonely person always has a very good physical or mental health in general no we always need affiliation we want someone to share our problems or you can say so that we can enjoy together why do we do this basically for increasing the chances of our survival please do think about it then we come across a very important thing called enduring or long term relationships so the example of long term relationships are like lifelong friendships marriage parents etc see these relations vary in degree of intimacy commitment and quality and this is one of the most important factor when it comes to the interpersonal attraction well most people think that relationships are like social contracts which depends on rewards imagine we we don't have each and every quality within us we lack few things and especially we do have emotional needs that is a big reason before forming a relationship with others especially the long term relationships because as i told you earlier these relationships actually give you relaxation it will help you in emotional regulation it's always good to share your problems as you all know so the rewards should fulfill the needs of the person and this interdependence of rewards is what makes the people come closer to each other this is a very 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 important point when we talk about long term relationships that again i'm reading it the interdependence of rewards is what the people what make the people come closer to each other well research says that infants learn to trust or mistrust other person 
on the basis of attachment they had with their mothers. Well, this is again a very important topic. See, every topic is very important over here. So the three type of attachments which one has with their mothers are secure, avoidant and ambivalent. It has been found that a mother's type of contact, tactile, visual, verbal. Tactile means here, the when we talk about the touch. So, mother's type of contact, tactile, visual and verbal, and her response to the child's needs leads to a secure attachment. Not only that, the behavior of a person later on also depends on this. The quality of love and affection in children is also a very important thing towards, this, towards their parents. And what are all those factors which determine the parental love? And especially I am talking in the Indian context. First, imagine charity. If your parents does have that thing within them, helping, forgiving and tolerating parents will, will actually make very good parents. Then comes justice. Fulfilling obligations to their parents and respecting their rights. Now this again form a very good impression on their words. Then we talk about prudence. Means they use reason and wisdom for taking decisions in life. Then we come across fortitude. We have come across many parents, those who share their hardships with their, with their word. Why? So that they understand the need of hard work in life. This is also a very important factor. And the last one is temperance. Means self-disciplined and stable-headed parents actually make good parents. And this somehow helps in enhancing the parental love in each and every child. Close friendships. See, this is going to be very important for you people. See, it is found when people spend considerable amount of time together, they actually become very good friends. As I've told earlier, that propinquity and nearness is very, very, very important for developing interpersonal attraction. And this works here. And basically what happens is that when we are small, we have got very good friends, we interact in various settings and also provides emotional support to each other. Just imagine, just go down your, in your memory lane and just think when you started sharing secrets with your friends. That is what we are talking about. That interaction in various settings and providing emotional support to each other is actually one of the reasons behind enhancing the closeness between the friends. Like I told you earlier, during childhood, we tend to share various things and activities with friends. As I told you, sharing secrets, which somehow depends on what type of attachment style we have gone through. See, this is something where everything is interrelated and connected. What you go through in your childhood, somehow that reflect when you are, when you reach the teenage and later on. So, during adolescence, people often encounter intimate relationships where they feel relaxed in each other's company. They get emotional, emotional support. The experience, trust, as I told you earlier again, just think about it, give yourself some time and think about it. That this is also interconnected with the things which we have learnt earlier. And at last, people who fail to develop close relationships experience loneliness. Now this is something which you should be aware of. You need to develop relationships with people on various level so that you should not go through loneliness because loneliness can actually hamper your mental health as well as your physical health. Now what we have learned today, we learned about self-perception or self-concept, which is a general term used to refer to how someone thinks about, evaluates or perceives themselves. And let me tell you, it's a complex social process where both child's own experience and society play an important role. Then we learned that the child gradually learns to differentiate from others and achieves an individual psychological existence. And we also learned that impressions are formed by considering various informations. 
Interpersonal attraction is determined by a number of factors physical attraction, familiarity, similarity, complementarity, and propinquity, and so many others. And the importance of significant others parents, siblings, friends it plays a very, very, very important role in forming the self concept or perception. And at last, the long term relationships provides us with psychological and emotional support. So, dear listeners, this was all about today's topic and I hope you have understood the things well. Thanks a lot.